All right, welcome, 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 everybody. Um, it is once again me, Storm, because uh, Varsity did not have a game today. So I'm going to be actually commentating uh, for real because I know how to play this game. The Junior Varsity team of Campo Verde High School versus the Nightmares. I don't know what school they are. It just says Nightmares, dude. So, I, I don't know. That's what I listed on the, the stream info. Anyway, um, check if you can hear me, by the way. Just quick mic check to anyone. Twitch.tv slash CVHS Coyotes. Swag. Yeah, going live from this is way better than the website. I love Streamlabs. <laughs> Not sponsored in the slightest. Alrighty. Okay, so we have good audio then. I was having, we were having that issue with, um, let's see, hang on. that um i'll try to get rid of this one let's see let's see um see if you can hear this yeah i know Was that better? Okay, yeah. Oh, and they are in the draft. Okay, let's take a look. We got Quillamin, my good boy Dan. Uh, no, that'll be questions, actually. Which one of you is Quillamin? He's Quillamin. Got it. All right, uh, is this our bot lane? Okay, taking a look at the bands here. Xin Zhao, very interesting choice from the ban. Um, I know that his spear... Um, sort of rotating attack. I'm going to be real. I haven't played much as him. Um, but what I do know is that that attack can be quite annoying, especially in team fights. So that is a very good ban um, on their part. The Alawi ban is quite brutal, um, especially considering the fact that um, Ethan's main kind of Alawi, well, not exactly. Not, e Ethan can still survive without Alawi, but still, um, that ban is going to hit hard. But he does thankfully have many alternates, so as long as we can get that Camille or that Darius ban, to be expected. Um, I know that our resident top laner here uh, wants Darius to be tossed into the sun and feels the same about Garen. He's nodding right now. Um, so, let us see. The weak fear the shadows. Ooh. Kane ban. Okay, now that's going to be really rough because right now um, our current resident jungler, Tristana. Okay, Tristana's a good ban. Um, you you hate to see Tristana's often, like in solo queue, ranked and stuff. Tristana can be a nightmare, especially if you don't know your support. Getting rid of that Zaya, that's going to be interesting. I don't know if our bot lane actually plays any Zaya, but... Um, in the event that they did, that'd still be devastating. I play a bit of Zaya myself, and the crit rate on her E can be really detrimental to any possible um, fights and stuff like that. It, it, it can be rough. Okay, um, and just for anyone in the audience, I'm going to be doing my best to try and just explain how this game works, what's going on to anyone who isn't super used to it. Yeah, you only have, um, you guys get three bands, then, then two. Yep. Okay, so Caitlyn. Now, Caitlyn is going to be really l r rough bot lane due to just incredible poke pressure um, down at the bot lane. We're also going to be seeing um, definitely a lot of Qs, and her passive, when she stacks it to, I believe it's five or six, is when she gets that headshot potential. Um, and that headshot can be really rough early game. It's six? Okay. Um, 
So we're going to want to... Our bot lane's going to have to play carefully in this. Nami. Now, Nami has some pretty good CC in addition to healing, so we are going to have to be careful with that. The Morgana and the Mordekaiser now. I believe Mordekaiser is meant to be for Ethan. Um, Mordekaiser is a very, very strong pick on him. That's kind of like comfort pick I've seen. Um, so... I, I can tell that this is going to be a good lane top lane. Their win condition is probably going to be that. So if they can spiral their top lane and get it fed, then I believe that Ethan can carry them through into a W. Um, Nico. Now, Nico mid. Nico's a tough one because Nico, she's all about misdirection and um, fooling the enemy. So... Um, trying to look in and analyze uh, Morgana. Now, I know that I haven't seen... Um, I haven't seen our support questions um with morgana ever actually but um i so it'll be interesting to see that morgana has some heavy crowd control so it'll be interesting to see how that sort of interacts with um the play today okay uh diana and udir ban now i don't know about the udir diana you do not want to see in the current patch ever since 13.3 came out um just absolutely zooted in the meta. I really do not want to see her. She's super overtuned, so it is a good thing that they are ejected from that. Okay, now, um, Mundo. Mundo, Mundo. Mundo's an interesting one. Because he counters Mord pretty well. Um, very, and he's a stat check. And here's the thing. JV is a little bit less experienced. That's just how JV's teams are. So I feel like getting rid of a stat check top lane is a very good pick there. Because you do not want to see any stat checks going on there. Now, Wukong, his autos and his clones are going to definitely be an issue this game. Um, it is, it's going to be rough to try and get through that. We'll see. Uh, is the game audio coming through duplicated, or is it just fine? Oh, yeah. No, it, it is coming through duplicated. Hang on. I'll, I'll uh, get rid of that. Okay. 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 We're, we're going now. Um, we're going to have the UD.GG uh, for this. Just trying to get the match up here. Um... Ooh, we have that Yasuo and that Viego. Now, Yasuo, his team fighting potential can be huge if he gets some solo picks early. I don't fully know about the Viego on Charlie, but we will see how that goes. But it would appear that the brothers are at war tonight because Yasuo is going up against Yone. Now, typically in the matchups like this, I've seen that uh, the matchup tends to favor a Yasuo a bit, so it's really going to be down to skill here. Um, we are going to be waiting a little bit um, until we can actually see the enemy comp and just some info on both sides. So for now, let's, uh, let's take a look at how our jungler does with, um, Viego in general. All right, so looking at, um, looking at Viego, we're looking at in the past, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in the last seven games, we're looking at, um, about five wins and one defeat, although every time a high KD ratio. So I would say that uh, we're looking at a pretty favorable matchup for jungler as long as things are just generally careful. Um, when it comes to... Okay, so when it comes to our support, um, I haven't seen many Morgana games by them. Um, Alright, I don't know much about that. Um, now... Um, looking at our bot lane and trying to see this Neela here. Um, 
we aren't getting much games or graphs here. Um, so instead, let's take a look at that uh, slobbish. Okay, slobbish on the Yasuo. Um, now, we're looking at out of uh, about... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Out of 13 games, we're looking at about five losses. So just looking that real quick. Um, that is a solid... Yeah, that's a solid, like, 62% win rate. So, uh, since we're just chilling in the positives right there, um, we're hoping that uh, things are going to turn out good for that bot lane. We still know for a fact that the win condition is most likely going to be those, um, those tops and stuff like that. But for now, it would appear to me as if um, that mid lane is going to be quite strong. We do not have much info on the enemy Nico, but we will see how um, all of that goes. So we are going to be we, we are going to be switching over to our game resource here. Boom. All right, and then that would be 30 seconds until we can get off. Um, in the meantime, I'm liking the matchups here. Um, I'm quite hopeful about it. Um, I would say that we do need to be quite careful on all accounts, try to not let them get that first blood, as about 62% of games um, are pretty much over at that point, especially when you get to the first tower, because at 72% of first tower taking teams um, end up locking up that victory in the end. So our team, we want to, the Coyotes, get as many of those small advantages as we can um, in the early game. And here we are, the spectator's delay is done, and we are going to be hopping into the game. Um... Hopefully, we will be in soon. Okay, um, here we are. I have actually not seen anything that's been going on yet, uh, lads, so we are going to just chill here, uh, get HUD gameplay, hotkeys, interface. Okay, uh, looks like we do not have visual there, so we're going to just cut to the screen capture, boom, and boom. Um, Okay, we've got the objective timers, and, um... Onto the fog of war. Got that interface visibility. And we should be ready for match start. Um, all right, things should have gotten started up now. Uh, let's see if there's some technical difficulties. Um, let's see.
Okay, uh, let's take a look here. We've got game, interface, sound, video. Here we are. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay. All right, we're getting some small uh, technical difficulties here. I'm going to, like, five minutes. It should be in at that point. So I'm just going to rejoin it, and we are going to... Ah. Uh. All right, so it would look like we got kicked off, but that is not the end because... We can still probably get a view into what is going on using OP.GG's lovely live game feature. Let's save. Spectate. Here we are. And there we go. Sorry for the minor technical difficulties. It looks to be um, the score is at about... Here we are, three minutes. We missed the very beginning, but we are still getting a little bit of the gameplay here. It looks like um, early on, three kills were indeed conceded to um, the nightmares but no it just begins at three um so looking at um just from here the some trades going on down bot lane nightmares are up by uh 1.5k gold and three kills um going to take a little bit of work especially here a little bit of a trade going on mid lane uh, bot, we are getting some of those Caitlyn pokes I was talking about earlier. Those can be quite nasty as Morgana is stunned by the enemy Nami. Um, things up top lane are looking relatively fine. Um, trades are not that bad. Uh, taking a look at just the item builds so far, Morgana has quite a few more than the enemy Nami, but Wukong and um, their Yone are definitely making something happen and our mid just barely backs out after a really really bad trade popping a healing pot there um it appears there's some kind of scuffle between the junglers but there might be a fight going down here as we get the first kill of the game for the coyotes but wukong's coming in it would appear that our jungler hasn't even noticed and that is one more kill to the nightmares Viego is trying to make something happen somewhere bot lane. Um, I have not seen Charlie's Viego in action, but I do know that it is quite rough. Really nasty trade there on questions, but um, that's just how it can be sometimes. Um, looking up here top, we're getting a little bit of footsies here. Um, Ethan is a level up on the Yone. Uh, the gold diff has raised to 2.2k, and we are looking at a trade here. Um, can he lock up the kill? It looks like he will as we get that passive, but it wasn't enough. Or was it as we get the kill top lane? That is fantastic for the Coyotes. It appears something's about to happen top lane. Um, Wukong is approaching. He gets hit by a nasty E right into Q. Um, meanwhile, Yasuo just getting hit after hit, but still making the trades happen. Nila is trying to do something. The spell shield didn't really have much effect. Going back in uh, for the kill, which unfortunately leads to another death. Um, 
looks like our jungler is trying to take some of the enemy's gold. We've locked up that gold diff a little bit. It's only down at 2.1k right now. Um, now, for those of you watching at home, um, typically up here, um, the gold scores, you want to use gold to buy items that let you take or deal or um, just withstand more damage. And uh, that is why you want gold. The team with the most gold has a little bit of a lead going on there. Um, no towers yet. Six minutes into the game. We are still looking at... Ooh, that is a 2.3k gold lead. Um, they might want to lock this up in terms of CS pretty soon if we want to make anything happen here. Um, Nico, on the other hand, is trying to make something happen. Um, trying to search for a nasty trade here. Warding bot side. Um, Chemtech Drake is up. Now, Chemtech is very good for that added tenacity and um, health. That is a really rough trade on the Yone, bringing him down severely. Um, we are looking at 1,000 health on the Nami. Um, Caitlyn is still making things happen. Those cooldowns are up, though, and our bot lane's taking advantage of that. Trying to go in despite the low health. Uh, we're going to see how that goes for them, and unfortunately, spell immune does not mean immune to death. Morgana trying to get out, kind of walks into that queue as that is yet another kill to the enemy. Uh, full 3k gold diff now, but a quite favorable trade bot lane. Um, Yasuo sends out that W to block a nasty, um, I believe that's Nico's W, the throne ring. Um, we have an E and then a Q getting for that bonk. We know we love to see that Mordekaiser passer around here. That Mordekaiser passive, rather. Um, now, Mid kind of throws away that early lead right there as we see two deaths once again. Still no towers into the game. I feel like if the Coyotes play a little bit safer here, um, we can see some actual momentum start to happen. But top lane being that win condition I predicted at champ select by taking home yet another W. And uh, we're going to look at that. We've got the Giant's Belt, the Amplifying Tome, and the Doran's Shield. Now, Doran's shield is really big in this matchup because you want to see that constant health regen um, throughout the laning phase. That is always very good. Um, looking here at the Caitlyn's build, um, we can see that she already has a Noon Quiver. Um, Neela only has long swords and a dagger, so that is going to be rough. Ooh, and there's a fight happening up top. It could just be a trade, but we have no idea as... Oh boy, Ethan is just once again on fire. This is why, oh dear, but it looks like Yone is trying to make something happen, but he still locks home that kill with some just excellent mechanics, pinging that Yone R. Back to the bot lane, it appears that they've been holding their own health restored. S some minor damage burn there. Um, we are looking at the enemy Nami, still only with a Kindle Gem and Fairy Charm. Um, the added health and mana regen is going to help a lot in lane, so they are going to have to worry about her having her W up more often, um, but her E will be a little bit of a problem here. She's starting to recall, uh, giving our bottom lane a much-needed breather. Meanwhile, looks like something might be happening mid, um, j just a basic trade. Um... Oh, and the enemy actually took a dragon right out from under my nose. Um, yep. Drake may be popping up again in about... Um, that would be... Yep, that would be about two minutes. Three, actually. Um, Ethan is returning to lane. We're going to see if Wukong is going to try to make anything happen here. Um, I have a three-minute delay, so I do not know. But um, what I do know is that they have a 4k gold diff, and there is that Mordekaiser passive again, just absolutely destroying that Yone's hopes and dreams. But what isn't destroyed is the tension at the mid lane as we get a root on the Yasuo, just a barely missed W wind wall. Um, those wind walls can be huge, as wind walls will prevent the enemy from hitting any projectiles, landing that nasty Q. It would appear that Wukong is hanging just outside vision. There might be some kind of confrontation happening here in the top river. Let's see. Nope. But there is a small scuffle over Herald.
Now, looking over here, um, the Rift Herald is a huge objective to take, as upon slaying it, you can recruit it for your team, and it will allow you to... Oh, and mid is going to feel the pain tonight, as that is an ignite flash, and the top laner comes down to lock in that kill. Um, probably some sort of pings there, but unfortunately they fell on deaf ears. And speaking of ears, um, it would appear that our Viego has not heard the warnings and needs to take a step back to regain health. Um, some kind of fight happening bot lane. That is a flash that came out of nowhere, and we once again see our attack damage carry fall. Now, the bottom lane is interesting. Um, the attack damage carry, the t first of the two positions that are down there, um, they have a much stronger, stronger late game, but early on into the game they can be quite weak, which is why the support is usually there to pop off that early game crowd control. Um, it would appear that Viego has been seen and CC'd once again, and just narrowly dodging, but unfortunately he cannot dodge that ult. Um, did not see that control ward, unfortunately for him. That is a rough death. We are looking at a 5.6k gold lead here, as well as a taken Herald, and it is going to be... We do not know if um, top lane alone can recover the entire team from this, but we will see. Oh, uh, we, our support might want to back here. Um, I am currently looking at what seems to be just a couple of small trades. Of, they should be investing in a potential counter dive, um, trying to draw the enemy into a tower dive while the jungler then tries to counter with this. Which, well, I mean, there was a Rift Herald down bot as... Well, Rift Herald lives up to its name and starts bringing down the tower. We are looking at a potential loss of first tower bot lane. But turret plating is still up. There's still time to make something happen here. Um, mid lane, once again, getting ulted by the Nico. And this looks like bot lane. It will be the first turret of the match, as well as the second dragon taken locked up by the Nightmares. Oh, something's about to happen up top. We are looking at Yone starting to go in a little bit. Uh, let's look at the item diff here as, once again, Ethan hitting those passives, that E and that Q. Oh, but right into the ult. And, unfortunately, there is nothing that Yone can do. All right, now looking at Yone's build here, we're looking at that Noon Quiver, that Berserker's Grease, and that Vampiric Scepter. Attack speed and um, lifesteal are currently an interesting pick in the meta as Wukong is actually trying to come in and make something happen, but unfortunately he is able to get that shut down. And the king is toppled, however briefly, off his throne. Objective bounties are up. That means that our lovely CVHS Coyotes will be able to get additional gold if they slay these objectives outside of that which they would ordinarily get. Wukong is coming down into enemy jungler going taking gromp um that is a very good camp to take even after its nerf in um the 13.0 patch series uh we've seen that with the jungle changes in season 13 um just an absolute restructuring of how jungle camps are prioritized and taken um their jungler wukong trying to secure that scuttle crab up top lane that is huge in terms of vision
little minor scuffle up top lane. We do hit that nasty Morgana Q, but unfortunately, we do not get that body blocked R. Actually, did we? We did. That was absolutely huge. Morgana surviving on 21 health. It would take just a love tap from that Caitlyn to bring an end to our days. Moving back up top where we see uh, Charlie and Ethan trying to make some kind of play on the Yone here, but little did they know that Wukong was hiding, lying in wait, waiting for the time, the time to shine, and sadly that time is now as we see both of our laners fall. Nope, Ethan is able to make it out of there. Let's look at that build right now. No Mythic, but a Rylai's Crystal Scepter trying to slow any enemies that potentially come in on him. And unfortunately, they are able to make that chase. Real shame. Now, we're looking at two dragons, one Herald, and one Tower Diff. That is a 10.2k gold lead. And unfortunately, the mid laner, once again, is taken by that Nico qwr combo. And we may be looking at the second tower of the game fairly soon here. In fact, I would even wager to guess that the third and fourth are going to be coming down at some point. There is going to have to be a serious restructure in how they play if the Coyotes want to come back from this. And blue buff on the Coyotes' side appears to have returned. Actually, that would be on the Nightmare's side. Um, red and blue buff are still down on our sides. It, securing those would be absolutely huge for the Coyotes. Um, Neela is just absolutely eating those shots. I do not think that we have a nice save there from Morgana taking that Caitlyn R. Um, it would seem that the... Oh, and that is the blue turret down, and that is a missed cue. From what I've seen so far, it looks like... Um, Spencer is yet to actually make the um, realization that Morgana's W, while it does provide um, a small shield against magical and ability damage, it unfortunately does little to no against um, AD or attack damage, and unfortunately that is what most of their team is building. In fact, I think that a general build negligence here of um, how to properly defend against enemies who are all building AD is really the difference here. Um, I feel like if the Coyotes were to potentially build some armor, they could make something happen as we see a play, a nutty play by Ethan trying to make something happen, getting that shut down, and unfortunately getting shut down himself because the ADC is just popping off. We see the Ocean Drake here. Now the mana regeneration, not mana regeneration, the health regeneration that this here Drake will give if slain, but unfortunately it would seem that the Nightmares are going to lock in their third dragon of the night, and they already got their second Herald. Um... Yone is trying to come in to make some sort of play here and is able to do it successfully, getting a nasty double, and they go for the red buff in the Coyote's jungle. That is just one dragon away from the Ocean Soul. Um, Ocean Soul is just absolutely huge in its health regeneration when out of combat. It is going to be incredibly rough to come back from this, if at all. Um, looking at runes this game, um, just rune builds, it does not appear that our Morgana has any. Oh, wait, no, we do have, we have an Arcane Comet, two Conqueror, three Conquerors, and an Attack Speed sort of build for our Yone. Now, looking at Yone, we still are not seeing a Mythic and seeing a lot of ADC items. This is interesting. In fact, I don't think we have a single Mythic on the Coyote side, um... This is very not good, considering the fact that we have a mythic on every... We have a mythic and a second item on almost the entirety of the Nightmare side. Um, if the Coyotes want to pull through this, they're going to have to play safe and build some armor, for sure. Small scuffle here mid. 
now Baron Nasher appears to have spawned. Um, we cannot see him from our current position. Let's keep following this Yone and see if some kind of play is about to happen. Um, there is something about to happen mid, though, as Ethan coming up, trying to... Oh, and that E, that barely missed E on that Nico. Unfortunately, that is going to be rough. Now, um, Yasuo is staying in lane despite low health. I wouldn't typically recommend something such as this. Um, this is primarily because we are dealing with a um, Vampiric Scepter, which even though lifesteal can be huge in trying to um, actually get items and such as what, stuff like that, um, it is quite unfortunate because um, we are looking at... Oh, yeah, and inner turrets have been destroyed. Inhibitor turrets are still up. Um, such a low... Oh, and we are looking at um, a major scuffle here in the jungle, but unfortunately, Ethan is not able to make a play as we get a missed ult from Viego right there. Um, that is going to be rough. Inhibitor turret down bot lane, and it would seem that the bottom inhibitor is about to face the same fate. Um, once again, Morgana seems to think that the W is anything more than a spell shield, but it does not work on autos. So, um, looking here, there seem to be a team fight brewing down bot, but we get a quite a nasty ult from Yasuo, but unfortunately it's not enough to make any sort of play happen. Could they be getting the inhibitor? No, they aren't, but they are getting the Neela, and then the inhibitor comes immediately after. The entire enemy comp is down here. Looking at these final builds, we are looking at almost a three-item diff as opposed to the enemy. Even our... We only have one player, two players, actually, with Mythics. We are looking at a third with the Immortal Shield Bow. Now, Immortal Shield Bow is a very interesting choice into a losing comp. I would have probably recommended something like a um, Gale Force, but unfortunately, it would appear that those dashes had gone unappreciated. We are looking at a fight for Baron up top. Uh, Baron is a very, very hard monster to slay, but then once Baron is taken out, you get a massive buff to your minions that is very, very, very critical in tying up those games. It would seem that Yasuo trying to come in for some kind of um, play here as Baron is just locked up. That was unfortunately a um, major objective lost for this. But just letting all of you know that uh, try not to shout into the stream, Mike. <laughs> I will let you all know what I think you can do better as your kind of coach um, between matches. Uh, Wukong trying to come in, make something happen. There goes Viego, and Ethan might be next, getting hit with a nasty nasty Caitlyn R and that is inner turret inhibitor turret and the inhibitor gone look at those minions that purple glow around them they're bigger they're stronger they're faster that is the effects of Baron Nasher and that is why that was a horrible horrible objective for the coyotes to let the nightmares take we are looking at the first nexus turret of the game down this could potentially be the end. Ethan's trying to make something happen, getting a huge shutdown. And that is the ult of the century, making something happen. Absolutely tearing the enemy apart, but unfortunately it does not look like it was enough as they had too much damage and he did not have enough health. That is the first game out of a best of three lost for the Coyotes. And the second game will be starting up uh, soon. I just have to, did somebody give me the uh, code? It's, it's full. It says it's full. So you have to give me the code. Error joining. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you switch to the second code? Click spectate. There we are. All right, and then I'm gonna sweet. All right. Um, hoping everyone was able to see there. So, um, for just 
So, um, in general, for all of you guys, um, just hang on. My tips, um, Spencer, Morgana's W is a spell shield only. It doesn't block against auto attacks. So anything that counts as an audio, and in fact, in general, across the board, just read your abilities, especially while holding shift, see what they do and stuff, because um, you would W yourself often to try and save from a, an auto attack. Okay, looking at that Wukong and that Alawi ban, Alawi, once again, kind of a useless ban because we could see how hard Ethan was popping off just with that Mordekaiser pick. Alawi's more of a pocket pick for him, to be honest. Um, I would say that that Wukong ban this game was definitely um, what we wanted to look for. Um, we saw... Yet another great ban. That is Nico. Okay, now Nico's stuns seemed to be devastating for the mid lane last game. Mid lane plays quite recklessly, so a champ that punishes that being banned is a very good show. We're seeing that Zaya ban again, probably for the best. Darius, once again, you already heard all I need to say about Darius in our last game. Um, Darius is just an absolute nuisance. Um, his bleeds are absolutely huge, dealing over time, health over time, health over time, health over time, and over time, over time builds up. Looking at the rune build of um, Ethan right now, we can see a nice Conqueror into Triumph. Uh, we got some Legend Alacrity and Coup de Grasse. Now, Coup de Grasse on... Um, Coup de Grasse on a Yone is very much the pick, I would say. Um, which is... We got that Resolve, Shield Bash, and Revitalize. Now, Shield Bash is mainly going to be huge um, if we are looking at a item build or comp that has shields. Tristana and Nami. Now, I've said everything I need to say about Nami, but Tristana is an interesting case. Tristana's bombs. Tristana can throw bombs onto you, onto minions, rocket herself forward, and do tons of damage, so it is not good that we are seeing that pick. We do have that Ari, that Viego, that Yone, and let us take a look at uh, who will be playing Ari. Uh, username? Oh, ooh, Lux. Now, Lux, I have some personal experience with her, so I can give a lot of insight here. Lux burns through mana like crazy in the early game, but her crowd control is insane. That Q deals a long route and a lot of damage, applying a spark of light to the enemy that can be consumed with one auto for the kill. And then her E, absolutely devastating area of effect damage that also pairs into a slow. And don't even get me started on the Mega Death Laser that is her ultimate. Only downside being difficulty to aim, but that means nothing. Looking at the Zack ban, that's kind of an interesting ban here into the Jin. Now, Jin is a very good champion to ban, but I don't know how good it is to ban into the Coyotes tonight. Now, personally, at, in a situation like this, um, we do not yet know the top or mid, so we want to get rid of that Trindamir. Exactly. Trindamir is an absolute menace. Um, Trindamir's ability to get so angry he refuses to die is incredible. Now, here's that Jin Zhao that the Coyotes banned last game. Now, I don't know if they know something we don't. Jin Zhao isn't usually that much of a problem, but I am still worried that how small of a problem he will be, he may still, in fact, be a problem. Now, are we looking at the Yone top lane, Ethan? Katarina on our side. Now, Katarina is an assassin. She gets in, she gets out, and she is an ability damage or ability power champion. It depends on the build.
looking at... Okay, we've got... Um, here we have Spencer with the Seraphine. Um, I believe... We have... Devin... Rockin' on that Ari. And then we've got Chase... On the Katarina with Viego once again being played by Charlie. That Jin Zhao is going to be rough. Let's us see who the enemy is going to pick. Renekton. Now that is going to be rough. I do not know the Renekton into Yone matchup. Uh, let us take a look at Moba Fire for a quick look. Uh, this is going to be that Yone. Let us see into Renekton. Threats. It would seem that uh, looking currently, um, Yone is actually not that good of a pick into a Renekton. Um, we're looking at a 48.43% win rate for the Renekton, I mean for the Yone, but I am quite confident in Ethan's ability to lock this game in. Bottom lane just has to be very careful. They need to itemize effectively. And most importantly of all, we are looking for those kills, top and mid. I am going to grab myself some water. I will be back. <laughs> All right. We have a minute 40 until the match begins, at least on our end. That is the spectator delay that is there to ensure that there is no foul play or cheating on any side that wishes to spectate. And that is fine by me because I have a little bit of time to just talk to all of you about the perspective game. Now, looking here at um, the comp currently, Ari and Deluxe is not a bad comp. It depends entirely on that skill shot potential. Um, Lux's skill shots are just absolutely um, a menace. Um, for those of you at home, skill shots are when an ability cast requires precision aim, usually in a quite small target, instead of being what we call a point and click, which is where you simply have to click on your target and okay. the ability cast. Now, if that Lux can hit those skill shots, then we're looking at a dangerous matchup, but in the event that they can't, things are actually going to be on the up and up. We will see how it goes, of course. That's just the way it is. And two seconds. Here we go. Oh, 
And they're off. Both both teams heading into their respective jungles. Welcome to Summoner's oh, it would appear to me like there is an invade going on here. But the coyotes were prepared this time and have backed off. Looping down by Krugs. Um, this is going to be an interesting play here. Um, but all of the coyotes are sitting there lying in wait as they get that first blood on Deluxe. That right there is absolutely huge. As you may know from my previous commentary, the team that secures first blood is most of the time the victor. So looking at that double kill for Ethan is absolutely huge. 2-2 uh, two, two right now. That Xin Zhao might be feeling the pain and so is Tristana. That was an excellent two for two from the Coyotes. Wow, that was just stunning right there. Minions have spawned though, and as everyone backs, returning to base, channeling and licking their wounds, we can really start to see how the matchups are going to play out. Now, looking top lane, um, Doran's shield into the Renekton's Doran's Blade. Now, Doran's shield is typically an item taken um, when you are expecting a long lane. You do a lot of um, taking a little bit of damage and backing off. Doran's shield will heal you up relatively quickly. Very good item for the early phase. It would appear that Lux got the level up before Katarina. Katarina's a little bit too far um, from the wave, I believe. Um, is Katarina Devon? No, Katarina's not. Devon? Okay. Um, it would appear that Devon is currently having a little bit of a duel with Lux. Um, we see Ethan at the top lane, level down on the Renekton, and Renekton's trying to abuse that. Um, that was not a good trade for our top lane. Uh, bottom lane, it appears that there's pushing going on right here. There's a slow push being formulated mid. Oh, and that is the Lux Q and E I was talking to all of you about. Those are some nasty abilities. It would seem that Ethan is an entire level down almost exactly from that Renekton. That is going to be rough. The CS is interesting. We're looking at a 0.4k gold lead here. Not ideal, but still winnable uh, for the Coyotes. No objectives have really gotten down, and we are looking at a Hextech Drake in about a minute. Oh, and there is the Renekton immediately onto our jungler. This might be very, very rough for the top lane after that acquired goal. Um, we are trying to see Yone trying to move in trying to make something happen with potentially Katarina. It would appear not. Lux is trying to come down. He did do a little bit of a smite there. We do a little bit of smiting around here. And unfortunately, that Yone E is not enough to make something happen. It really is a shame, but... The Coyotes can still pull this through. 7k gold lead on the other side. And unfortunately, that QE combo once again from the Lux. It appears this Lux is quite good at hitting her skill shots. That is going to be rough. We see Jin Zhao starting to uh, make some plays down bot. We get a really good trade top lane. Um, just some excellent pokes. You'll love to see it. Interesting comp bot lane where we're looking at the, um, instead of the traditional um, attack damage carry, we are seeing more of an ability power carry. That is a huge miss W from the Viego. Um, quite rough. That is the jump, the little rocket power dump I was talking about on Tristana. That is going to be incredibly rough going into the Ari. And that is a flash out from Seraphine. Spencer is barely coming out of there with his life but hey that's the best he can do a fantastic trade lots of minion damage on um enemy renekton ethan's biding his time playing this carefully uh looks like xp wise we're seeing a diff of about 50 percent but that is okay 
We need some more vision definitely here, judging by what I'm seeing on the map. We have a singular control ward up top. Um, ooh, that was a somewhat odd, in the end, a lost trade. Um, I do not know what the jungler was thinking here, but what I do know is that he is unfortunately another kill on the board. They are up by three kills, but thankfully, no, we do not get that save, despite how much Ari wanted it. We lose that Drake first dragon of the game over to the enemy. And once again, another kill to the Tristana. This bot lane is going to have to be careful and have a lot of vision if they want to pull through during this laning phase. The mid game is going to be quite interesting here. Um, things are still starting to shape up. We still have around four and a half minutes to go until the mid game truly begins. Um, looking at, ooh, the nice dodged Q from the Katarina. Um, that is absolutely huge for Devin. Um, he's trying to make some sort of a play here, but it, I was told that mid was Devin. Never mind then. Um, that was huge for Chase, but do you want to know what else is huge? Um, Lux's killing spree, because unfortunately, we do not see any more of our lovely Chase. And that is a tower plating for Lux, 175 gold. We're looking at a 4.2k gold diff here. This is starting to look like a repeat of last game, but as long as the Coyotes are able to get some vision and play it careful, get that CS, get that gold, get those objectives, they can make something happen here. Now, we have Drake in about 3 minutes 30. They should prioritize trying to take out the enemy jungler before... Um, Drake is able to spawn. That is the only way they can make something happen. Um, that is a lot of missed CC down bot lane, but thankfully it seems that the trade would be mutual, but unfortunately um, we are looking at a huge Tristana bomb that deals a lot of damage. That is a dodged Q from the Nami though, and we get once again one of those amazing, amazing trades up top. What can this man not do? We, I have no idea, but what I do know is that Ethan seems to have Jin Zhao directly beneath him. That is not in any way an advantageous position. What I do know is that the Lux just got, got that Ignite, and... Oh dear, and Jin Zhao comes in. This may in fact be the reason why Jin that was so feared. Jin Zhao, rather. Jin is a different champion. Yes, that gets confusing. Now, here we see uh, an advanced technique from Chase uh, called walking directly in the path of the Mega Death Laser. Um, I've only seen such strategies done in bronze before, um, mainly because anyone of a slightly higher rank would take a step to the right from the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. In two minutes, we have the Mountain Drake. Now, a Herald and a Dragon for their team is very bad. We see a face-checked Bush down bot lane, which unfortunately leads to the untimely death of both Devin and Spencer. That is going to be rough. Uh, flash down for most of the team. It looks like Spencer is going to get it back somewhat soon. No, Spencer has the flash. Um, we do have an Ignite flash and heal down from across the board as well as a flash from Ethan but it's okay because I doubt the lad even needs it but that trade right there was certainly a trade that only a mother could love because unfortunately um, oh but he does turn it around making it right even again once again what can the man not do Oh, some things might be about to happen. Uh, you, Ethan coming in on the Renekton, and unfortunately, uh, no kill is able to be secured mid. Looking at the enemy build, it appears that um, we don't have any Mythics on our side. We do have Boots built up on uh, three out of five characters. 
and out of the positions we have boots on one um oh dear that is a rough trade for ethan he might want to get out of there from now we do have mythic on two and a 550 gold bounty on the tristana um 66 cs 32 cs up on all our adc and unfortunately renekton is able to get that dive and we are looking at almost a 10k gold lead yet again. summoned Rift Herald, but unfortunately that is enough to give them the first turret, negating the first blood advantage from early in the game. Um, Viego changes his mind about the fight twice, a little too, little too late, and unfortunately Charlie is sent into the void. Um, and speaking of voids, the void critter has spawned, and we do indeed have the Mountain Drake um, possibly being secured by the Nightmares. And that is the Nightmares with the Mountain Drake. Oh, but the chem plants bloom, and here we are. Chemtech sold this game. It would be huge if the coyotes were able to secure it um, from beyond the dark. Um, we see here Chase just teleporting into Lux's views. Um, definitely an interesting play. Um, and heading back in, despite the fact that the enemy support is, like, just sitting there. Um, oh, and we see that stun on Ethan. Maybe the flash. Not enough, though, as he is unfortunately pulled back, and he has to use that ult to get out of there, but fortunately, he does not feed Renekton another kill. We have, um, it would appear that Bot does not check the mini-map because, um, despite some wonderful, wonderful vision, um, happening down around here, we've got that lovely, lovely control ward which no more, but prior to that control board's death, we had a control ward, and unfortunately, it was not enough to save them. Enemy control ward down here, uh, red sword variety. We are looking at um, Lux and Nami around top. It seems that there's some kind of fight happening top, though. Um, two level diff, but fortunately, um, we do know that Ethan is just goaded with the sauce and is able to get that shut down. Okay, uh, that is an 11k gold diff. Uh, we are going to need some serious CS for the Coyotes to be able to pull through. Outer turret at mid is looking like it is on the verge of collapsing. Um, small little dagger proc on the enemy Lux and Nami from Chase. That is quite good. Unfortunately, that Arcane Comet from Lux is going to turn that trade from one that's good into the one that's bad. And it would appear that Zin Zhao is preparing for a nasty dive here. A dive that succeeds. Getting a double kill on both Devin and Chase. Oh, and that is the charm on the entire enemy team. We might be getting the Nami here, and no more Nami. Rice Devourer 3000 has himself been devoured. Ethan is able to make a small amount of killage happen here. Um, Renekton taking top outer turret. Okay, uh, it would look like Xin Zhao is just going to send Chase into the Shadow Realm. 
And speaking of Shadow Realms, caught directly out of it, we get Charlie. Entire enemy team is grouping up around the mid inner turret. Inner turret down and moving on to the inhibitor. And stealing some blue buff right here. Xin Zhao is able to get that buff. Renekton leashing him. You can really see the coordination and teamwork from the Nightmares, unfortunately. Um, well, it would seem that we get a nasty shutdown on the Tristana. Objective gold bounties for Rift Herald are indeed up, so it is possible that the Coyotes could turn this around from this point. But... Here we can see uh, them utilizing the Herald buff to try and recall uh, some wards in the just middle um, of the jungle. We get a summoner disconnect, which is honestly kind of interesting. I'm assuming there was some kind of technical difficulty on the Nightmare's side um, that led to such a disconnecting. Um, Oh, and we see the ult getting that charm, maybe, but unfortunately, Nami has her flash, and Ethan does not greed for that. Uh, very, very wonderful um, ult from Spencer, however. But unfortunately, they have good ults, too. Jin Zhao is able to eliminate both Spencer and, it would appear, uh, Charlie. And it was a four for four. We also get Devin and um, and Chase. Quite rough as the Coyotes uh, surrender, and that is the game. Thank you for watching, everybody. Unfortunately, Coyotes Junior Varsity could not tie up the victory tonight, but who knows? Um, Join us next time on Tuesdays, um, although I will also be commentating Rocket League yet again, despite knowing nothing about the game, on Thursday for your viewing pleasure. And in addition, um, we will be having varsity games on this stream as well. Um, I have one uploaded so far. Unfortunately, you will not be hearing my lovely voice because we do not have anybody to comment the varsity games or just shout cast in general. But... Um, if you, sitting at home, think you know a thing or two about League of Legends and happen to attend Campo Verde High School or a high school in the area, you could, in fact, commentate the varsity games if so desired. I have been Storm. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye.